Hello and welcome to Basics with Dr. Banker. Today we will be discussing the role of age and the ovarian reserve of the female partner in infertility and the basic tests in its evaluation. On this channel, we regularly discuss the various aspects related to infertility and its treatment. So make sure that you subscribe and you stay updated. Age and the ovarian reserve of the female partner are interrelated and these two play a major role in determining a couple's ability to get pregnant. The ovarian reserve is a term that is generally used to define the ability of the ovary to produce eggs which are capable of fertilization and give a successful pregnancy. The human ovary contains cells called primordial follicles. These cells are formed in the female fetus when the fetus is about 6 months old in the uterus and then they will reach their maximum number. After that, there is no more production of new follicles and these gradually start to decline. Once these follicles are exhausted, a woman attains menopause. When a female child is born, the ovaries contain approximately 10 lakh of these potential eggs and out of these 10 lakh, only 4 lakh reach the stage of puberty. Every month when a woman menstruates and starts a new cycle, a group of these follicles is recruited and out of this group, one follicle is selected by the ovary as the dominant follicle. This follicle grows, matures, ovulates and this can give a successful pregnancy. The rest of the follicles are discarded by the body by a process called atresia in which they stop growing. So ultimately, in the reproductive life of a woman, out of these follicles, only 400 ovulate and the rest are discarded by the body. This occurs in either of two ways. First is atresia and second is genetics. As the age of the woman increases, there is a reduction in the DNA repairability of the eggs. So as the age increases, there is more production of abnormal eggs and hence these eggs are eventually lost. So as the age of the woman increases, the risk of other disorders which may affect their fertility also increases like endometriosis, ovarian cancer, uterine fibroids, etc. Women with a history of smoking, prior chemotherapy or radiation for cancers, history of endometriosis, history of early menopause in the family are at an increased risk of a premature ovarian failure. Studies have shown that as opposed to the western world, Indian ovaries age much faster. In this study, we have demonstrated that the Indian ovaries age 6 years faster than the Spanish population. So while a 20-year-old and a 40-year-old woman might ovulate approximately the same number of times each year, their pregnancy rate per month is different and this keeps on declining. As the age increases, there is more production of genetically abnormal eggs which ultimately results in abnormal embryos and increase the miscarriage rates. So age by itself is a very important parameter in determining the fertility and is the single most important parameter for assessing the genetic quality of the eggs. Next, let's discuss the various tests used for its evaluation. Many different tests are being used for evaluating infertility. The two most commonly performed tests are a blood test called AMH and second is a transvaginal ultrasound and an antral follicle count. AMH or the anti-mullerian hormone is a hormone produced by the small growing antral follicles in the ovary. It helps in determining the ovarian reserve of the woman, it helps in identifying the prognosis in IVF patients, helps in identifying premature ovarian failure, etc. What's good about AMH is that it is not dependent on the day of the menstrual cycle and so this test can be performed on any day. The drawback of AMH is that it is a lab dependent test and it is dependent on the method or the assay used for testing. An AMH blood test also cannot tell us how fast your eggs are declining or it is just a snapshot of your ovarian reserve at that particular point in time. An AMH level of less than 1 nanogram per ml is usually considered low but generally AMH is a good tool in determining the ovarian reserve. Next, let's discuss the role of transvaginal ultrasound and the antral follicle count. Performing transvaginal ultrasound has various benefits. First, we can look for pathologies in the reproductive tract like fibroids, chocolate cysts. Secondly, by performing serial ultrasound, 
we can check the ovulation status of the woman thirdly we can check the endometrium its characteristics its growth its morphology and fourthly and most importantly we can check the antral follicle count antral follicles are small growing follicles of less than 9 mm in size and these are a good predictor of your ovarian reserve a count of less than 4 to 6 is usually considered as low and the antral follicle count is usually performed on the second or the third day of the menstrual cycle these two tests combined the amh and the antral follicle count can give us a very clear picture of the ovarian reserve of the woman along with these tests the semen analysis of the husband should also be performed semen can be collected on any day for the assessment but a 2 to 3 day gap is ideal semen is assessed as per the who 2010 grading criteria which takes into into consideration its count motility morphology etc so by performing these tests and taking into consideration the age of the female partner the most common causes of infertility can be assessed and a personalized treatment plan which can include simple treatment plans like ovulation induction and timed intercourse to advance like iui or even ivf can be formulated thank you